What is going on, Niche Gaming Enthusiast? I'm Michael Jordan. This is Niche Gamers Game of the Year. We're doing things a little bit different this year, where we actually question every single person on staff right now doing reviews, playing video games, and ask them what is their favorite game of the year. This way you get a little bit of variety and you can get some different perspectives on why we all picked the game that we did. Obviously, we didn't all play the same games and it seems kind of stupid to pick a solitary game that we didn't all play. So, without further ado, let's start the festivities. Hi everybody, it's Cody Gully from Niche Gamer. This has been a very trying year for me in terms of video games. Sure, the games I played are great, but almost each and every one of them had significant issues that really keep me from saying it's the game of the year for me. We've had censorship, content removal, annoying soundtracks, and massive lags, and let me tell you, I've been looking forward to these games for a very long time. The one game that I didn't even consider ended up being my game of the year, practically by default. I'm talking about Kirby Planet Robobot. It's stupid fun. The developers didn't do anything drastically different to the formula, and the gimmick really worked well in my opinion. The remixed themes just gave me a giddy feeling in my stomach, and honestly, I couldn't find any real significant issues with it. No censorship, lags, no massive content removal, and absolutely no Tatsu. Seriously, Kirby Planet Robobot is my game of the year. Out of every game I played, may God have mercy on my soul. I am Alexi Nascimento Lajwa. My pick for game of the year is VA11 Hall A for Windows, Mac, and Linux. It's always a wonderful feeling when a game you've been waiting for so long not only meets your expectations, but exceeds them. Super Coupon Games' VA11 Hall A, or Valhalla for short, was that game for me, and the three year wait was well worth it. A visual novel with some bartending and money management mechanics, Valhalla is a refreshing take on the cyberpunk genre, more interested in telling the stories of its various characters living in this dystopian setting rather than tell a grander cyberpunk epic. Regardless of that, it still uses the setting to its full advantage, discussing transhumanism, mega corporations, and government conspiracies all in the context of people simply living their day to day lives. What really sold me on Valhalla was how fleshed out everyone felt. You understood and immediately identified with the many plights and daily troubles they have to go through, and you end up caring about the entire cast by the end of it all. This game did everything I wanted it to do correctly, from having great characters, fantastic music, an amazing atmosphere, and an, an impeccable level of detail, all wrapped up in a nice package that shouldn't be overlooked by anyone who even has a passing interest in visual novels and cyberpunk. Oh, it looks like it's my turn now, and this is going to be a little bit of a rant, especially with the game industry, so I'll try to cram it all in in one minute. Let's look at 2015. We got Splatoon, Witcher 3, Fallout 4, and Bloodborne. All amazing games, all well executed, and all knew what they were doing with their own properties. Now let's actually take a look at what came out this year. 2016 was a wave of mediocrity and garbage. We had Overwatch, Battlefield 1, The Last Guardian, Final Fantasy 15, Pokemon Go, Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, No Man's Skies, Tom Clancy's The Division, Street Fighter 5, ReCore, and Dead Rising fucking 4. These are the either epitome of mediocre or broken or garbage. This was just such a horseshit year. And then like an angel in the sky, Suda51 put his hand out and said, Michael, I have a game for you. And that game is Let It Die. And that is hands down, not only an amazing game, not only free to play, but my game of the year. And I have to say, for all the interesting environments, the characters, the way that they have it set up, a fighting system that is on par with fucking Dark Souls for free, you're goddamn right that it's my game of the year. And since he forgot to tell you all his name, I'm going to introduce you to Intern Matt, the littlest shitlord, shitposter extraordinaire, Intern Supreme. Here it goes. Take it away, Matt. My personal game of the year for 2016 is Uncharted 4, A Thief's End. While it carries that same level of polish we've come to expect over the past 20 or so years for Naughty Dog, what I really loved about Uncharted 4 was how it combined the elements of the first three games and made a very satisfying conclusion. While in some people's minds it may not have reached the peaks of Uncharted 2, I still think it's absolutely great, and I think it's one of the best games Naughty Dog's ever made. It's definitely one of the best games this generation. It looks absolutely stunning, plays amazing, and I honestly, I can't think of a game that I played this year that I remember more fondly than Uncharted 4. It was just a wonderful experience to play through all around. Incredibly fun, great writing, story, soundtrack's awesome. You know, it's just, if you have the chance, go play it. Definitely worth your time. 
Hey guys, this is Brandon Arcelli, and Stardew Valley is my game of the year for 2016. Developed solely by one man, the farming and life simulator RPG was created with the sole purpose of recapturing the magic the genre might have lost over the years. I'll be honest, I've gotten a bit jaded with Harvest Moon over time, so playing Stardew Valley felt like playing back to nature and I've loved every second of it. The game has throwback visuals, but overall, it feels like a labor of love. From its game world, its overarching story, the feeling of getting back to nature, the characters, and more. One of the standouts in this game are the characters. Instead of being cookie-cutter fantasy tropes, they're actually more realistic. Case in point, Penny the teacher who's working hard to escape the trailer park. I really can't recommend Stardew Valley enough for both fans of Harvest Moon and even fans of RPGs in general. The game is so well polished, and it's made by a fan of the genre for fans of the genre. That is it for our Game of the Year video. Thank you guys so much. It's been a pleasure working with all the people here at Niche Gamer. Seeing all you guys commenting, see you guys all like, all the people who do the subscribing, all the people who do the Patreon, all the people who do the comments, everybody who whitelists the site, we have to all thank you. Without you guys, there's nothing. And I hope to see all your faces Monday for 2017. Let's make this an amazing year for gaming. Let's make gaming great again.